In the mid-20th century, physicist Enrico Fermi asked his colleagues during lunch, where is all the extraterrestrial life? Scientists have been struggling to answer this question ever since, dubbing it the Fermi Paradox, since after all these years, we still don't seem to find anybody out there. But why exactly is that? In this video, we'll consider the most interesting theories to explain the Fermi Paradox. Could we be the only living beings in the universe? Or maybe Earth is just an exhibit in someone's zoo? Or could aliens turn out to be so different from us that we are blind to their existence? Overall, what are the most eerie answers to the mystery of extraterrestrial life? What if immense space beyond Earth is totally dead? Maybe it really is, and we just don't know the exact recipe for the beginning of life. The James Webb Telescope will be looking for rocky planets like Earth in habitable zones around stars where water can exist in a liquid state. But that's not enough. It's believed there's another indispensable condition for the emergence of life, and that's volcanoes that enrich a planet with organic substances. And there also must be a magnetic field to protect it from stellar winds carrying charged particles. Besides, let's not forget about a big moon. We need it to cause tides and stir this organic soup. Moreover, a star system where life might potentially begin must lie away from a galactic nucleus and regions where supernovas occasionally explode. But even that won't be enough. I strongly suspect the recipe for the beginning of life requires hundreds of other ingredients. In the entire endless universe, the right combination of them could possibly end up in the same pot only once and create Earth an absolutely exceptional place in this regard. However, a lot of scientists don't like its uniqueness, and it also kind of makes us bear too much responsibility. If we accidentally destroy all life on the planet, that's going to be some truly epic fail. Although there's another theory to explain the Fermi Paradox, which doesn't suggest chronic loneliness. What if there is life in space, but it's just not intelligent? This idea was proposed back in the 90s by economist Robin Hansen. He tried to prove that our humanity could be unique and came up with a concept he called the Great Filter. Let's imagine that life appeared only on four of around 300 million rocky planets existing in our galaxy. That's still too few. And according to the idea of the progress of life that we humans support, all participants of the evolution race go through the first great filter in 1.5 billion years. Then complex living cells start to appear on three planets, and the fourth one stays trapped in the past for good together with its primitive bacteria. The rest of them manage to avoid the dropout, but they'll have to face another great filter in a billion years. Multicellular life will emerge only on two planets, and then large plants and animals will come on stage. Another billion years later or so, Earth remains the only one to overcome the next great filter, and marks this achievement with starting intelligent life. Long story short, this concept to explain the Fermi Paradox suggests that alien creatures aren't little green men in flying saucers, but brainless bacteria or wild animals living on pristine planets. In fact, that's what scientists developed the Loop Project and the James Webb Telescope for, to find telltale signs of such life. Certain philosophers claim that humanity has been chosen for this mission as if the universe needs us to help it better comprehend itself. But the Chosen Ones are currently a package deal. Am I right, Lana Wachowski? And this non-uniqueness of humankind paves the way for the most intriguing and frightening solutions to the Fermi Paradox. What if there are a lot of intelligent creatures across the vast space, but they just haven't found the way to go up and explore it? 
To build rockets capable of entering orbit and reaching the moon, we needed significant technological breakthroughs and heavy resource consumption. But if the Earth, let's say, became two or three times bigger, even our top-notch rockets wouldn't break out of its gravity. And the large majority of rocky exoplanets that we know of belong to this exact type of massive super-Earths. In places like that, intelligent beings would have to give up their dreams of reaching space, at least until they invent anti-gravity devices. And that's not the only obstacle they may face. Scientists assume that conditions for comfortable life may be found on planets with warm oceans hidden under thick ice crusts. And this ice will effectively shield the intelligent creatures not only from space radiation, but also from entering outer space. That's because to do so, they'll need some unthinkable hybrid of a submarine, an auger, and a rocket. But even if another civilization lives in the same conditions as humans, it could be destroyed by a nuclear war, a collision with a giant asteroid, or another catastrophe. These are sort of great filters also, and there's no guarantee that we can survive them ourselves. In the end, alien nations may abandon the idea of space colonization because they want to watch Netflix and chill instead of flying anywhere. Especially if they were the ones to invent a perfect virtual reality. Maybe we'll also give up this expensive hassle of exploring outer space. Even the James Webb Telescope is unlikely to find these home buddies lounging around thousands of light years away. However, even our best telescopes can miss advanced civilizations that could have already populated dozens of star systems. And this variant is possible in case the scariest solutions to the Fermi paradox turn out to be true. What if there are lots of intelligent aliens up in space and we just don't see them? After all, what made us think that another form of life must develop just like it did on Earth and undergo the same great filters? Signs of alien creatures might be everywhere, and only our prejudices stop us from seeing them. According to one of the latest scientific assessments, right at this moment, our Milky Way could possibly be inhabited by 36 alien civilizations. Some of them might even be exploring star systems not far away from Earth, and we don't even notice it. Perhaps some highly developed extraterrestrial beings have long known everything about people and are watching us on the screens that they've installed all around Earth. Maybe that's what doesn't let us spot aliens, but allows them to see us pretty well. Like we're in a cage in a zoo. If we do this to some clever animals, why can't other creatures do this to us? Maybe we're characters of their favorite space show, and that's not the most pessimistic hypothesis. Our galaxy could be not a comfy zoo, but rather a dark forest full of ambush predators. None of the civilizations knows what to expect from the others, so each of them sticks to the most reasonable tactics – hiding in the bushes. But if any of them dares to come out, it'll be immediately exterminated by the first opponent that notices this public appearance and sees it as a threat. Well, that seems to be the only reliable way to secure your own survival. The possibility of the worst-case scenario makes some scientists criticize the SETI project that deliberately transmits signals to distant stars. So should we start preparing for the invasion now? Or are we being invaded right now? In the spring of 2022, the U.S. Congress had the first big talk about possible contact with aliens in 50 years. We've seen the so-called UFOs many times, but what could extraterrestrial beings look like? You must still think of the aliens as little green men, right? However, astrobiologists claim that extraterrestrial life is, in fact, completely different, and every corner of the universe is teeming with it. This is Titan, Saturn's moon. There's eternal winter on its surface, with temperatures reaching minus 180 degrees. A human won't last a minute in those conditions, but a silicon-based creature can. 
This is the most common element in the Earth's crust. We know that carbon is the basis of our planet's life. Similar to it, silicon can form bonds with four other atoms simultaneously, and this means complex compounds that are vital for any form of life. However, here on Earth, silicon bonds are weak. The environment is too hot for them. Meanwhile, on Titan, they could feel right at home. The local cold climate will make organic silicon matter even too stable, to the extent that all the creatures with such body chemistry will be very slow in everything. If there's a silicon-based humanoid race living on Titan right now, then our astronauts will be disappointed in case they want to shake their leader's hand. And brave linguists from a rival would have to hold up that sign for days in a row until the aliens could read at least one single word. That's why silicon-based humanoids will probably find people some ultra-fast superheroes. However, startling differences don't end here. If silicon-based organisms breathe in oxygen, they won't breathe out carbon dioxide like us. Instead, they will exhale sand. I bet you won't feel like inviting them to your clean, cozy house on Titan. But how widespread can this cold life be across the universe? Silicon-based life can comfortably exist on a much greater number of planets than humans, even in billions of worlds. Remember that in our solar system alone, most planets and their moons are colder than Earth. It turns out that the habitable part of our galaxy can be silicon-based with rare carbon-based exceptions. And yet, a lot of scientists question the fact that silicon can be the foundation of complex organisms. In their opinion, even in extreme cold, it's still no match for universal carbon and its properties. These scientists are even labeled carbon chauvinists, though they haven't been canceled so far. And if silicon chemistry seems impossible to them, the following alleged creatures will definitely blow their minds. Here's the scoop. What if some life forms don't need chemistry at all? This neutron star with an unreadable name is the closest to Earth, and it lies at a distance of 400 light years. Its radius is just 14 kilometers, but its mass equals that of our Sun. The matter inside it is so compressed that the regular atoms have broken apart, leaving behind only neutrons. Electromagnetic interaction that lets carbon bond with everything you can think of on Earth doesn't work there. When it comes to a neutron star, we deal with the strong nuclear force. It's very short-ranged and affects only subatomic particles. Some scientists believe there might be a whole other world at the neutron star micro level, as in theory, strong interaction can bond compressed particles into complex structures, just like electromagnetism does on Earth. In such high-energy life that neutron creatures might be living will run millions of times faster than ours. If we try to get in touch with them, thousands of generations would come and go in a neutron world during the time we'd spend saying our first hello. This time, we're going to be the ones unable to shake an extended hand. Besides, I doubt that neutron creatures would even believe we're real, since our electromagnetic chemistry would seem an absurd theory to them. Not to mention that their population would significantly exceed that of carbon-based beings. Even though there are a thousand times fewer neutron stars than regular ones. The Milky Way alone has at least a few hundred million of them. We just can't see most of these bodies. At the same time, apart from deadly cold planets and ultra-dense stars, there are still Earth-like worlds in our Milky Way. They're pretty rare, but anyway, some astronomers assume that they might be inhabited by carbon-based creatures very similar to us. On the other hand, this could be a complete fallacy. How different could life on a twin of Earth be? Take a look at Kepler-452b, an exoplanet situated 1,400 light-years away from Earth. That's an enormously long distance, but scientists spared no effort and did manage to see one thing. This rocky world lies in its star's habitable zone. Kepler-452b resembles our home in so many ways that it's been already dubbed Earth 2.0. But if new cutting-edge telescopes let astronomers discover signs of carbon-based life there, that planet could have a different type of chirality. 
This property lets organic molecules be identical in composition and structure, but look like a mirror image of each other, like your right and left hands. What does it change? If on Kepler-452b, our researchers came across a monster whose chirality goes beyond the norms we're used to, our terrestrial equipment wouldn't recognize it as a living thing. Organic molecules that are left-handed in a human body would be right-handed inside that creature and vice versa. This means that all the sensors produced on Earth are useless. The whole trick is so effective that some organisms use opposite chirality to their advantage even here on our planet. The bacteria causing anthrax has a right-handed protein coat. This tiny detail makes it invisible to our immune system with its left-handed sensors. At the same time, it means that if this monster with untypical body chemistry decides to have a human for lunch, it won't be sated or will get poisoned. That's precisely what was shown in the Mass Effect video games, where the Turians had opposing protein chirality unlike all other species. But what if in the real world it's our Earth-type chirality that's abnormal? Astronomers calculated that there can be up to 300 million Earth's twins throughout the Milky Way, and all of them could be unsuitable for humans because of opposite chirality. And what if all other parts of the universe are packed with creatures able to ruin our fundamental ideas about life as it is? Who may inhabit those far reaches of the universe we consider hostile and barren? This is the asteroid belt, just a bunch of rocks left after the formation of stars and planets. We can come across them in absolutely any star system. Asteroids contain a lot of useful resources, including carbon and various metals like iron. We surely wouldn't mind taking them for ourselves, but certain living space machines may extract them sooner. American mathematician John von Neumann pioneered the idea of self-replicating robots. According to his theory, if we teach machines to develop and create their own copies, they will be no different from biological life forms, except for surprising vitality and terrifying appetite. Scientists call these robots von Neumann probes. Their task is to arrive at a location, find any resources, and start replicating so that the following generation could move farther in space. Such an army of teeny piranha robots could colonize the entire Milky Way in some half a million years. And what if another civilization has already launched them? In this case, most free-floating asteroids have long become raw materials used to produce living probes. And if we ever get to see von Neumann's alien machines, that's a signal that we're all doomed. I don't know about you, but I have no idea how to explain to them that humans aren't just biomass they can use for their endless self-replication. If all this is true, those who've been dreaming of finding life in the universe will finally get what they craved. Outer space will suddenly become much livelier, but at a price. It will also be lethally dangerous. But what if I told you that other life forms already exist right here on YouTube? Some philosophers claim that our thoughts and words are also material. Some of them get energy from nerve impulses sent by our brain, evolve, and self-reproduce through communication. For example, with the help of YouTube comments. So tell us what form of life has surprised you the most. Only make sure that no one's spying on you, because you might create new unique beings while typing. And that's quite an intimate process. Also, check out this video and find out the real reason why NASA sent the Voyager Golden Record into space.